uh, due to the effects of the fall, uh, there's a certain uh, the uh, father messenger. He calls it the sense of shame. I actually I actually like it uh, because of the uh, the concupiscence that we have, because of the tenders of sin that we have, because it's uh, our sense of appetite is not under control. Um, Adam, for before the fall, uh, had the preternatural gift, um, and he would have been able to. Um, uh, they're without clothes in the garden. He would have been able to, you know, see his his wife without clothing, and not uh, and be have have control over his lower appetites as not to have any sort of uh, motion of concupiscence. And uh, when his when his reason judged that it was proper to engage in the use uh, for whatever end of procreation, at the end of procreation, when his intellect judged that the use was proper. He would have uh, consented uh, to the movements of a sensitive appetite, which is fine. Um, the uh, there's a kind of dictum amongst the scholastics that um, the uh, the sort of movements of the sense appetites act as uh, conditions conditions of of a certain end. So um, uh, if if your uh, if the end is is proper and the uh, and the movements, the sense of appetite are willed and everything like that, uh, they, they are, they're meritorious. And, and that's what the, the theologians uh, mean when they say that the marital use can be meritorious. He's there as an act of religion in the production of children or an act of justice uh, in the paying of the debt. So Adam would have been able to will that and, and go on. But with us, with us, uh, due to the effects of the fall, and this would be in a man in a state of pure nature as well, there's a sort of a uh, confusion and shame that arise. Uh, and this is also why uh, my recent crusade uh, or against nude art is com completely correct. I'm completely right on this. The reason I'm completely right on this is when you look at the clothing of Adam and Eve, the reason that there's the clothing of Adam and Eve is because due to the effects of concupiscence, there is this sort of motion that's not willed. So imagine going from this, the state of being able to completely control um, the movements of your sense appetites and will when one wants to um, uh, have a motion of their sense appetite to something going from that state to a state in which you have uh, you do what you uh, do not will. So kind of like a Roman seven uh, type state. You, you obey the law of God in your mind and uh, your flesh is warring against your mind. So due to this warring of the flesh against the mind, due to these uh, movements of the sense appetite that are not, under the control of right reason, due to these, uh, we have a sort of shame that arises uh, when it comes to uh, sexuality and nudity. Um, and this, this shame arises uh, and it causes us to want to cover ourselves. Uh, so completely makes absolutely no sense, the, the, the sort of pro-nudity and art position. It makes no sense. Uh, theologically, it makes no sense. Uh, historically, it makes no sense. It's really just uh, kind of vacuous uh, garbage arguments that are always used um, to to support um, nude art. It's basically, it's matrad and base, so I can you know uh, use uh, Venus sculptures to uh, to contemplate. It's disgusting, honestly. Um, so if you actually you know think think in accordance uh, with the theologians of our church and, and church dogma. Uh, when it comes to these things, um, you, you can't come to this conclusion. Um, now, how does this connect to, to your question? I'm, I'm, I'm looping back to this. So when it when it comes to uh, us in this world, we are still going to have the fomus peccati, the, the tinders of sin, the concupiscence. We're still going to have concupiscence. So um, one, over time, and this is part of the reason why we do things like uh, things that lead to detachment, so we, we do certain penances for this reason, is to put the flesh into discipline to the spirit. So uh, we we want to be able to have that self-control, to control the movements of our sensitive appetites. So uh, somebody within within a uh, within a marriage, the movements of their sense appetites might be so vehement, that there is the possibility that either by by thought or by deed that they that they fall into a sin and falling into sin not only does original sin have this effect of concupiscence on us 
But actual sin, actual sin actually makes concupiscence worse. And the grace of the sacraments makes concupiscence better. Uh, it, it, it relieves us of concupiscence, uh, which is uh, which is why, in order to get rid of concupiscence, uh, there's a lot of different options that you can take, not just uh, the marital use. But the, the marital use, by providing um, a, a sort of proper use, um, a sort of proper, uh, one, one can describe as relief of, of this concupiscence, in a way in which uh, is not even venially sinful, as long as it's done for its proper ends, it's actually meritorious. By, by that relief, one is able to not fall into sin and make the concupiscence worse, but actually, um, perhaps uh, because many do it for the improper end, uh, and the fathers tend to say that the uh, request of the debt is at least venially sinful, it at least has uh, some sort of less damage, uh, if you want to put it like that. Or uh, if it's done for its proper ends, uh, it may have no damage at all. And if it's uh, meritorious, because it will be meritorious uh, if done for its proper ends, then it actually may uh, improve. Prove it. So the, the moderate and temperate use of the marital use is actually going to help with this problem of concupiscence. It's gonna it's gonna place the the sort of uh, the flesh in, in submission to the spirit. So when we think about when we think about this, that is how uh, it's to be done. Um, that's how it works. That's how it is going to uh, help someone overcome uh, concupiscence. Now, on the other hand, one one may have a sort of faulty reasoning, which a lot of people implicitly have, and this faulty reasoning is basically, well, I mean, if it's, it's something which is meritorious, and therefore if it's meritorious. It's going to help overcome concupiscence. Then wouldn't the, uh, the uh, as high as a, uh, this is kind of like the the Tim Gordon Will Nolan uh, reasoning? Wouldn't as high of a uh, frequency as possible sort of uh, make them overcome concupiscence even more? No, that's ridiculous. Because that would de facto not be for its proper ends. It'd be the uh, for the end of libido, uh, which is um, translated usually as lust which libido uh, is merely the end. So we can have a certain subordinated end of, of, uh, of the enjoyment of the act um, is always subordinated to its proper end. But the, the, uh, the marital use for the sake of pleasure alone is really what it is, which uh, according to the teaching of blessed innocent, the 11th, um, the position is condemned uh, that that is not venially sinful. It is at least venially sinful, um, if not more.